All right, here it is. I've got it on its side because I'm gonna go through it, make sure everything's good. I'm gonna pull the clutch cover, check the clutch out, check the shift shaft out. Uh, said it was a good running engine, but I found that the sprocket was welded to the output shaft. So I cut it off with the angle grinder. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to weld the sprocket back on, but you don't change your front sprocket too often. Now, something you have to consider when mounting this engine is clearance. So on these engines, the exhaust runs underneath, not like the ATV engine that runs out the side. That makes it easy to route and you don't have to worry about clearance underneath. There we go. So luckily it's pretty tidy under there. So we're only gonna need maybe four or five inches of clearance. Now you wanna mount your engine low so that you have a low CG. Um, so I'm gonna get into this. I'm not gonna put this on camera because there are plenty of videos of the YZF600R engine being torn down. Now, lesson learned, don't just get an engine, get a whole running bike, ride it, make sure it's good and use that engine. It's gonna save you a lot of time and trouble. And you can pull the engine, the harness, everything you need to swap it. And then you can sell off the parts and maybe just get a free engine out of it. Uh, that's actually what I was looking for when I found this. And instead of getting the full bike, I just got the engine and I regret it. <laughs> All right, there we go. Got a big, huge open space to mount any engine you want in here. I designed it that way on purpose, so every inch that you add to the motor takes away from your leg room, but the leg room is maximized, so unless you're getting an engine that's 12 inches longer than most engines, you're going to be just fine using whatever you want. So before we mount the engine, we have to prep this area to take an engine. So C37 is your engine mount crossbar, or cross member. And that just goes in there, right there, make sure it's squared up. And then we gotta get the bent piece since we're putting a crotch rocket engine on here. Uh, the exhaust goes underneath, so we have to lift it up. We can't, we can't mount it right at the bottom. All right, I've got the cross member tacked in. Now what you wanna keep in mind here is the clearance for your exhaust for C41. Uh, the exhaust is going to go through this, the engine is going to be mounted on top, so you're going to have to put the exhaust on after you mount the engine, but that's not really that big a deal. So make sure you have enough space for it, and make sure you have enough height for it. Alright, so we got it sitting in here, but I've run into a little bit of an issue. Since we need to run the exhaust under it, and that raises the whole motor up, now I designed this to where the chain rides around the forward upper control arm. Now I've got a 14 tooth sprocket on the front and a 38 tooth sprocket on the back. The final gear ratio, since this is a motorcycle engine and these are not 20 inch tires, the gearing is reduced dramatically. So the front sprocket is gonna be a 17 tooth sprocket. The rear is gonna be a 43, maybe a 41. So that's gonna expand this out. So we shouldn't have to worry about this, but that's something you have to take into consideration when you are mounting the engine, your clearances for everything. All right, I'm gonna give you a nice close up of this. So this is just the rear tab that I tacked in, it's tacked in three places, and the bolt is running all the way through. This is the rear motor mount bolt. Now you can see it's, there's a gap at the bottom because I had to raise it to make clearance for the exhaust. So I'm gonna have to make new brackets if I wanna triangulate that. But we've got that tacked in, so now we can put the motor on a pivot from the rear and then start test fitting the exhaust. Once we have the exhaust test fitted, we can make the front mounts, use that rear mount to measure up what we need, make new rear mounts, and the motor will be mounted. All right, you can see that we do have a small gap underneath and the stop clearance above. 
Now I pre-cut the rear exhaust because I know that it's not gonna come out from the side, it's gonna come straight back. So I cut the attachment tab off and I cut it after the turn because we're gonna end up making that straight anyway. We're just checking for clearance. So there you go, there's your gap. It's about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch, which should be fine because this engine's gonna be hard mounted. So now we need to come up with the front mount. Here's our attachment places. Okay, so this is where C41 comes into play. Now, if you look using the Polaris 500cc engine, you're probably not gonna need this because you can mount that super low. So what you need to do is take measurements. You gotta figure out whether this is gonna go above or below the oil filter. And I made this so you make 90 degree cuts and then you can rotate this around this forward uh, cross member. You can make your tabs and it'll all be solid and, and square and easier. Since the exhaust runs underneath and the, the oil filter runs right out front, it kind of complicates this, but we can get around that. We've also got this oil line right here. So I'll take a look at this and see what we're gonna do and we'll get it done. Okay, I'm getting ready to notch this, and I made my marks a little bit long, and I'm gonna notch it a little bit long, because you can't add material. Now we can slowly nip at this until it's the exact height we want it, and that it's level, but we can't add material. So when you're fabricating like this, um, leave yourself some room to work with, so you don't have to remake your piece. That's why I like to put 90 degree cuts on a 90 degree rotation. Um, you can level your machine, then you can level your piece, set your notcher for 90, and you have a perfect cut. It's gonna fit strong, it's gonna fit square, and that's exactly what you want when you're mounting the engine. This oil filter return line is turning out to be a big problem. Uh, the easiest solution would be just to re-clock it in a different direction, but it doesn't look adjustable. It looks like it's just one assembly. So the decision is to go above it or below it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna notch the top half of this tube. We're gonna take the notch we cut, we're gonna flip it and put it back in there and weld it that's gonna make a recess for this to go out and it'll still keep the full strength of the tubing because it'll be still a full circle. Looks like I can make this work, but if I would rotated this notch, I don't know, 30, 45 degrees, it would have changed the offset of this and cleared that no problem. So now I either have to remake this whole piece or trim it and make it work for this. I don't want to put this all the way down on the oil filter. It's got about a quarter inch of clearance now. All right, so here's what I'm talking about with this. We made an inch and a quarter notch in this and we have inch and a quarter tubing. So all you do is slide your inch and a quarter in, cut around here and you have the full strength of your tube uh, just with a recess in it. All right, let's check it out. Look at that. Perfect, that's the exact position I want. It's the exact angle I want. This is not my prettiest piece of work. And I'm probably actually gonna just redo the whole piece because I can't stand cobbled work. I'm gonna try to fill this with weld, but that's a lot of weld to fill. That's a lot of uh, weld gas. This is where you're torn between salvaging a piece and it not turning out how you want and redoing it anyway, or just redoing it. This is going along really well. We still have a 16th to a quarter, maybe three, three eighths of an inch of clearance above our oil filter. So this really couldn't have turned out any better. So I said at the time lapse and forgot to hit the record button, but uh, I cranked the wire feed of my welder all the way up and I was actually able to fill all of that. I've never done that before. I've never cranked it all the way up. Now everything's sealed. The tube is solid again. It's very, very strong. 
and this will clean up nicely and be a very usable piece. All right now, with the exhaust out of the way, um, and you wanna check to make sure you can still take your exhaust off and put it back on, uh, nothing's in the way, it all just slides right in. So you can see the cutout for the oil filter return line, and you can see this is the inside part of our motor mount. So we need to measure this distance, make a tab based on a one and a quarter inch tube for both sides, and then we can start to fit this piece into place. Now, I haven't tacked this in yet because depending on our tabs, the rotation of this may change. All right, I made the tabs up. The inside ones fit really well and there's enough of an angle on it to where this engine weight is not gonna try to break this tab off. It's gonna push forward and down. We've got enough material to box it in on the bottom. Now these outside ones, I, uh, I don't think I measured them correctly. <laughs> but we have one made up, so all we have to do is measure the, di the difference. Sometimes you get that. All right, got the motor mouse tacked in. I got C41 tacked in. Let's, uh, let's take it off the jack and see how we did. Well, that's just tacked in and it's really, really good. Suspension is still really progressive. Now, the stock bike doesn't even use these motor mounts. It uses mo mounts coming off the head right here. The force is still pushing this bar forward, so I might add some, some cross braces right here. I haven't decided yet. I'm just happy that the motor's in and mounted. Now I'll do one final check on the exhaust. Exhaust still goes in well. There's still plenty of clearance all around. This is awesome. I guess now I'm gonna get started on the pedals. I'm not gonna finish the exhaust. I already have a video where I just brought up an exhaust, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna shoot this one. It's basically just gonna come out the back put the junction in there, but essentially this is what the exhaust is going to look like. I'm going to cut off this big tube right here so that this should all fit flush. And I don't know, maybe sit something like that. So now all that's left to do is box these in. Uh, you're going to want to do that. On mine, I like to leave what I call a landing pad. When you're mounting the motor, if you have something to set it onto instead of this falling all the way through, it'll be easier to uh, get your bolts in. So I like to leave the landing pad, I don't know, an eighth to a quarter inch under where it would line up for the bolt. So it sits on there, you pick it up an eighth of an inch, you slide your bolt in, you're golden. So I'm gonna definitely do that for the front and for the back, it's just gonna be a piece of flat bar run across, maybe some uh, tubing. So this is just the basic first step of getting this engine in. Um, we still have to fit up the intake box, the gas tank, the radiator. We have to do the electronics. So I hope you guys weren't thinking this was going to be a first startup day. This is just how to mount an engine, get good alignment, and make it nice and strong. And we have definitely done that today. Thank you for watching.